so busy. Look at all these messages he's checking. He's getting everyone texting him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a busy caught man. Ya. We caught you, John. Welcome into the show. Um, I mean, oh, I don't even know how you're digesting the day. Maybe let's just go a little bit more big picture with you and what this whole process has been like, watching the ceremony start, watching all these legends take to the stage and putting their hand in the pots to pull it out. And then, of course, you're the last country. Uh, what has this all been like for you? Well, all, all I heard was you uh, mocking my fashion and saying uh, <laughs> a copy uh, Gareth Wheeler. Looks right? great. Uh, Gareth is playing. Yes. He's claiming he was trying to pay you a compliment. <laughs> it was a compliment, was it? Oh, okay, thanks. No, I'm um, no, it's been a wonderful, wonderful moment. I mean, to be up on the panel there with Jules, um, you know, who's who's bled for this country, and then just us talking, we're saying like we're in the pot, like our ball's going to come out. You mm -hmm. know, how many years have we sat and had to watch this this draw and support the other team that most Canadians support? They can. Put all of those shirts in the draw this time, especially the Italians. They can put them in the draw and just put their Canadian shirt on and enjoy it, Miss Petrillo. Okay, well, can I can I confess? So, if anyone's ever seen my Zoom calls, this was Italia. That yeah, was here. it was. Yeah, yeah, that is now Canada. You you are you are very right. But hey, I was always cheering for the for the no, Canadian it's, too. It's true. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, we we get that chance. I mean, my vivid memories were '86 World Cup of the whole family, the whole family in a room packed together and just experiencing that hand of God moment, which broke everyone's heart. You know, the, the moment that I've dreamed of is that one where Canada score its first ever goal at a World Cup and the whole country from coast to coast erupts. Mm -hmm. You know, there'll be granddads, grandmas, grandparents. They're the same. Kids, <laughs> you know, you can just see it. That you know, people having barbecues and and oh, it's winter time in Canada in the day. But anyway, they'll, they'll be having a bloody great time, and the country will go off when that mm -hmm. moment happens. You know, Davies, David, Laren, I don't know who's going to score it, but it'll just be a seminal moment for our sport. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's one thing this weather has taught us in Edmonton, and then of course on Sunday, I think Canadians will continue to celebrate even in the cold. Yeah. Uh, but John, as much as we're embracing this moment and loving it, you know the wheels already start turning. And I know that's the same for you. And we're already starting to look ahead. What do you want to see happen for your team? What are the types of teams you want to play against as you prepare for Qatar? Look, there's layers to this, Andy. I think, you know, having been in those dual roles all my career where you're in a, a development director type role, you understand the impact the World Cup can have on a country, on a sport. So I'd like to be selfish and just say everything we do is going to be for this team um, to, to get them prepared. But it's deeper. You know, we've got to look at the commercial opportunities. We've got to look at, you know, how we can maximize the the finances that can flow and trickle in through the grassroots so you know some of the decisions will be absolutely technical and others will be about how we grow this sport but what we do know is we've got nations league so we have to go back through the whole CONCACAF process again of maybe even flying to Suriname and playing Panama away again I mean that this is on our doorstep in June I mean to be fair we'd like to be playing you know those type of teams, African or Asian or European. But we'll take out of that experience what we can. That might be a chance to blood some new players, test some new players, test some tactics. But we will get a, a chance in June to play a friendly match. I've got no doubt. And we'll push hard to get a good, good friendly game here in Canada. But I think mm -hmm. September, given the realities of Nations League in June, means we have to get offshore. We're going to have to get offshore, base ourselves in Europe, We've not had that European experience in Europe for four years where we know we can attract top, top level opponents uh, for a friendly match. So that's where we'll be selfish around the team and make sure we, we get what we need. But June, it'll be about, you know, being back in our country, taking some learnings and opportunities we can, but, you know, allowing the fans to just experience our team. Mm -hmm. 
Ollie? Yeah, speaking speaking of Europe, John, two two really interesting European opponents. Obviously, teams with enormous quality, enormous experience, who have been deep at World Cups. But maybe also, and I don't mean to underestimate them in any way here, but maybe also teams that are a little bit older um, and, and might have been looking at 2018 as, as their real big chance to to win a World Cup. When you contrast that with the youth of your team, does it give you a bit of an opportunity when you look at those matchups? Look, I love, I love your mindset, Ollie. We have to look at everything glass half full. We've got to look at every opportunity that presents itself. I just think Canada, we keep our feet on the ground. We recognise our first World Cup in 36 years. We're going to go in there. Everything's an opportunity. Everything to, to have from the first experience, the training experience, players feeling the cadence of a World Cup to get themselves ready for a home World Cup. But to take this moment, to take it against a Belgium and a Croatia, people like Alistair Johnson, Kamal Miller will get a chance to play against Lukaku, De Bruyne, mm -hmm. you know, Jonathan Azario, Stefan Estacchio to put their wits against Luka Modric. I mean, those moments individually are seminal moments, opportunities for people to show the world, but then as a collective and then as a country to play these type of teams, just opportunity, real opportunity yeah. as an underdog to, to do something that puts Canada so high on the football map. Mm -hmm. Gareth, did you want to go? Uh, nothing to fear, right, John? No, no fear, nothing to fear here and excitement sometimes the order of games um plays a significant role in how a team's journey plays out through the competition what do you make of the fact you play belgium first mm. croatia second then morocco well i think i think belgium they um they'll they'll really put preparation into canada i think that's uh it gives them a little bit of a head start with their quality. I think sometimes you get Belgium in the last game and the last game, they haven't done the same layer of preparation. So they'll be ready for us. There's no doubt that, the, you know, there's seven days of prep to win your first game, which there'll be massive pressure on that team to beat the underdog Canada. Huge pressure. You know, that there's nothing to gain in that game for a Belgium team, you know, outside of three points. And for us, there's, there's everything to gain, everything. So we, we get, I guess, seven days of preparing for, for me, one of the top three teams in the tournament. And, and that's critical there where we can really put our tactical acumen um, and then build the spirit and the chemistry around the opportunity of playing the second, third best team in the world. Um, yeah, we'll be ready for that game. Uh, that's that's going to be a, a cracker. It, it's it's funny because fans are already coming up with their dream pre-tournament yes. friendly scenarios, right? And oftentimes it's about teams that you know that that play in a similar region. Well, your native England drew the United States. Is that a phone call that you would want to make to yeah. call the English Football Association? And, well, my same, and that, would that be would that be a friendly agents, something to remember? Uh, my agents, Gareth Southgate's agent, so I might just have to see if I can work some <laughs> magic there. So, yeah, who knows? Um, no, I think England usually have their games already uh, locked in like three years in advance. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it, it's definitely a, a good opportunity going into Europe. We we need we need to play some big games here, Gareth. I'll, and I'll never put my personal, you know, um, dreams ahead of the team. Like, we've just got to be smart. There, there are teams that have a similar profile to Belgium that I can see in Europe already that you would say, OK, that's that, that's a team. That, that, that's something that, you know, the Dutch, I think, have a similar profile to Belgium. You, you could, you know, target um, and be more specific. But... It's where the teams want to play Canada. That's that's the next thing. There are layers to this. It's really a complex mm -hmm. process. Um, you know, maybe next World Cup, you know, we're not you know begging teams for for a match. They're they're begging to play Canada. So it'll be it'll be a tough a tough run through to get what we need. But I said this in my interview. The most important time is the ten days prior. Like anything, we can do anything, but we never know if that player is going to be there. As I said, we did half of this qualifying campaign without Alfonso Davies, even yeah. on the field. So 
I don't know what I'm building my tactics around until my players are there. And I can't guarantee that until the 10 days when they all get into camp. Now you build the chemistry, the team spirit, the tactical excellence. And we're ready to go. That, that's where I've learned on my international experiences. These next windows, I think it'll be about seeing if there are any players in MLS that are lightening it up that might be able to push into the 23 or, you know, some players in Europe that we've been trying to coax to come back to Canada, maybe to give their 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 time in those windows. People like Iowa Canola coming back from injury. You know, there's, there's a lot of... Um, unanswered questions I've got around my squad. And I said this to the players at the end of the Panama game in our final meeting. You know, the 23 men that got us here may not be the 23 men that get us there. And they have to make good decisions now around their career and take it up to another level because it will tell a story. Well, John, we were actually discussing that before you came on and you've been so bang on with your selection. And as you know, fans... They play GM as well, which is so great in how they get involved because before every window, there's always been, is this going to get called in? Is this player going to get called in? But you've managed to manage your players so well and saying, this guy may come in, you may not be playing. How How is that something that you're going to have to navigate as well? Because you've just said you've had players who got you through those first three rounds who may not be a part of it. Like, how huge is that a factor in how you coach this team and making sure everyone is as mentally strong as they can be come Qatar? Well, I think I think it was setting it up as these missions. You know, there was a group of men that were going to earn the right to qualify for Qatar. They've just made history. They've, they've left an unbelievable legacy for their country. Now they've got to earn the right to be at Qatar. You know, to, to be in that 23. They qualified us. They've took our country there, but they've got to keep earning that right. And, and that's new Canada. That has to be the new standard. You know, I've, I've played a lot of players through this period. I think over 35 players have came into that squad and represented. And each of them have told a story when they've been in. Even that game against Panama, you know, I'm already thinking about which players do I need to still see that I need to get tested. I need to learn some more about. So, you know, while people were looking at the selection there, I was looking at it through a different lens of, yes, we've got to rotate players and get freshness, but I also needed to see, you know, players that hadn't had minutes and who've been on this journey, where are they at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I can't imagine how tricky that'll, that'll be for you. But again, like I said, throughout this whole process, you've pretty much nailed it, um, which has been absolutely spectacular. Yep. How much as well are you going to sit down right now and start to look at those other three teams and the way they play? Um, and I know it's, it's a question we always ask. How are you going to approach that team? And I know a lot of times the response, at least in the past that I've gotten from coaches, is we're not going to worry about them. We play our game. But how much do you look at the way they no, play? You can't. <laughs> you can't <laughs> not worry about your opponent. I mean, this is, yeah, I mean... The art of war. I mean, what, what we don't get to control is the terrain, which is what we've been able to control in these last matches against USA and Mexico at home. You know, that, that's out of our control. So, you know, tactically, we're going to have to be spot on. But you can't overthink the tactics because there'll be coaching changes in the next six months. You never know. You, you would never have thought the Spain coach would have changed the night before the tournament started in the last mm -hmm. World Cup. You know, players will get injured. Star players won't make it. You know, people that you've built strategies around. So that there's an initial scouting phase and a tactical blueprint preparation for those teams. And then you go through the tactical blueprints for the teams out of the tournament. But you've got to leave yourself space to think. You've got to leave yourself the, the, the creative space to be adaptable. And that's even with your own team. Like I say, mm -hmm. did I know Alfonso Davies was going to be there? You know, in those seven games against the U.S. at eight, of course, Fonzie's playing USA at home. And then he's not. He's not yeah. there. Yeah. So you, 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 you have to worry about yourself, but leave yourself space to think. But all of the work's got to be done on the opponent. Like, you have to know them inside out and then be ready for whatever comes. I've said this. I think our DNA at this stage in our evolution, we have to be an adaptable team. <laughs> 
I mean, that's it. The most adaptable team and adapt to our opponents. That's been our strength, where we can be a bit of a chameleon and make it difficult for them to tie us down and be able to change in game. Um, you know, when you're fighting lions, you can't fight as a lion. That That's, mm. you know, Belgium are a lion with world-class players in every single position on the pitch. We've got players that are proving they're world-class players. So, you know, for us, we've, mm. we've got to rely an element on the tactics and have a much higher team spirit, which is mm -hmm. this pioneering mindset to be first. You know, Belgium mm. aren't going to be first at something. You know, in a group stage, we are. We've got so much to play for, even in a group stage. They just want to get out of it into the next round. We want to mm -hmm. score our first goal. We want to keep our first mm -hmm. clean sheet. We want to beat our first ever top 10 opponent in the world. It's never happened before. Mm -hmm. So much for us to get after. And that's what I've got to burn into the minds of our players. John, before we let you go, I want to show you a flashback photo. This was back at the 2014 World Cup when you were a guest host wow. alongside me. Look at that young man. Look wow. at you. Oh, uh, and I, yeah. I got to say. This job does to you. <laughs> 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 the, I looked at that and I just wow. thought, I mean, obviously we never know what the future holds, but I have to, I am so proud of you because it was such a pleasure working no, with you in 2014 because you brought such a different viewpoint of the game. You made our broadcast better. And I can't believe that eight years later, you've gone from guest hosting as an analyst on a men's world Amazing. cup to coaching Amazing. one. How does that feel? <laughs> Just anything's possible. eh? You, yeah. you, you work hard, you fight for what you believe in. And um, you just don't listen to those doubters. You do not listen to them. You just keep moving forward with, with your, your belief in what you, you can achieve. I mean, I'm a snotty nosed kid from Concert County, Durham. I mean, what am I doing here in Canada talking to you guys about going to Qatar? I mean, holy. Wow. Yeah. But I'll, well, I'll tell you what, some people amazing. don't get better with age. That, that's for sure. Stop it. Oh, come on. Like that a fine cool. wine. Look at yeah, what I you don't know about that. Wow. Congratulations, you deserve it. And please do not take your fashion tips from Gareth. We yeah. do love our Gareth. Come on. What's, what's, what's sharp? Sharp. John, okay, team. Have a good vacation. Yes. We'll see rest. Thank Get that vacation. That is John Herdman, the head coach of the Canadian men's team. Look at that. I mean, I, I'm trying to, I can't even imagine how it's got to feel for him. I'm sure he's still in it. So he'll have a moment where he'll digest everything. Maybe it's when he's on the beach somewhere, who knows, when he takes his vacation. Uh, but I also love the honesty as well, because how many times do we get that, guys? And listen, you've been covering sports a long time, just the same as me. Oh, you're taking on so-and-so, right? How do you approach it? Oh, we don't worry about them. We just worry about us. Meanwhile, Herdman's like, no, we're going to be doing like graphic charts and spreadsheets and Excel sheets on the opposition. You have to. That is what you have to do to be successful. And I think that's why when you do look at this team, there is this sense of comfort, Ollie, that they're in very good hands. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be Canada's Canada's X factor in, in the way Canada can hurt these teams is they are going to be super prepared for every opponent they play because we know that you know Herdman and his team do a, an enormous amount of work behind the scenes to be prepared for every game. And then they are the underdog. Right. So that he mentioned it there that there's not the expectation on Canada that, you know, they're going to go into these games and dominate and have loads of the ball and, and try and go toe to toe with Belgium. You just can't do that because, we you know, we just still don't have the quality in this team as much as it's improved to try and do that. So you try and find opportunities, you try and find ways to hurt, it's, you know, identify weaknesses and exploit those weaknesses. And that's something that I think Canada can do against these opponents. It doesn't make them favorites, doesn't mean they're going to win these games guaranteed or anything like that, but it gives them a shot. And, and I think Canada has, you know, both the, the kind of structure and then the weapons as well to, to cause some problems here. Yeah. Well, I've, this has uh, been... What do you have? Something add, I've, I've never met anyone like John Herdman before I know. in my life. <laughs> just um, listening to him speak... Um, you know, nothing was handed to the guy at all. He's worked, he's fought, he's scrapped. But having the vision that he does and the ability to read people, not players, but people for who they are, what makes them tick. Then on top of that, just having the tactical mind that he has, we are very lucky to have him in this country. And just hearing mm -hmm. him speak there, I mean, you can you can listen to him all day. Thought it was interesting about the squad, kind of what we were touching on, guys. Just like... 
Because it's not about who's going to be out. here. It's more about who's not going to be here. Those are tough questions, uh, conversations he's going to have to have. There is some talks yeah. that they that that squads are going to be expanded to 26. We'll see, which would make that job a little bit easier. He shares an agent with Gareth Southgate as well. Like, it's not just about Canada playing a profile of, it, of a European nation. England plays the United States. It's it's like a natural pull. Like who can if you're England, who do we want to play that you know kind of plays like the United States? Canada would kind of be the closest fit. Those are just yeah. my final thoughts on that. Guys, we're going to be talking about this for another two hundred and thirty something days um, because be awesome. Canada's going to the World <laughs> Cup and we get to talk about them. So this is so exciting. Congratulations to that squad once again, and it just keeps churning for this national program because then the women begin their World Cup qualification process this summer and we are covering it all right here on One Soccer. So big thank you to KJ and Charlie taking you through the viewing party. Thank you to Gareth and Ollie. I'm Andy Petrillo. Do they want to go to you. four hours? With 13 um, minutes off of four hours. That's right? great. I'm but, but, going to toe punt to the finish line right now. By Just the way, Ollie, concert versus uh, Milton Keynes. Who you got? Concert versus Milton Keynes. I, I gotta say, I've never been to County Durham, so I can't give a fair oh, opinion. But, uh, don't it's, go north. it's hard to it's hard to top Milton Keynes for entertainment mm. and attractions and all of these different things. Unless you're Yuki Sonoda. Yeah. All right, Ollie. We know <laughs> you've been we know you've been quarantined in Costa Rica, but we cannot wait to have you come back home, especially since it's snowing yes. outside. So soak up that heat while you can, because oh, you ain't getting it here in Toronto. Boys, a pleasure. I'll see everybody next Thanks, week because uh, One job. Soccer Today, of course, continues. And thank you to everybody. Enjoy the months to come as you get set to cheer on your team for Qatar 2022. See ya.